Hi, I'm Steve Grossman, Solution Architect with GitLab. If you're watching this, you probably want to know more about the value of GitLab for SCM against GitHub. This is an area where customers frequently have questions as they try to determine the differences. So we'll look at those differences. Remember, however, that GitLab was originally built as an on-prem replacement for GitHub in the cloud. So there are a lot of similarities at this level. And ultimately, it's all just Git, which puts a box around how much extra we can do. Some keywords you may hear are GitHub, of course, as well as SCM or source code management, VC or version control, and code repo or repository. About a year ago, we were approached by a customer who was having difficulty scaling their self-hosted GitHub to the needs of their large 20,000 developer organization. From them, I learned that GitHub Enterprise is delivered to on-prem customers as a virtual appliance, that is a black box virtual machine. This means there's no way to scale except vertically by putting that single appliance on ever larger hardware. And this particular customer was already on the largest hardware they could obtain. There's no horizontal scaling of services like there is in GitLab that breaks out part of the workload to their own nodes. And there's no tuning or monitoring of the application just outside, at the, outside the appliance at the virtual machine level. GitLab, on the other hand, allows both horizontal scaling and vertical scaling. And we have documented reference architectures in our documentation to support 10,000, 20,000, and 50,000 user architectures, as well as smaller. And our architectures are verified by actual testing. When it comes to the SaaS hosted solution, GitHub may actually have a slightly stronger offering here with the newly introduced private SaaS single tenant instances. But understand, these exist mostly to drive workload to the Azure cloud. As I said, there are a lot of similarities between GitLab and GitHub. As I said, it's all Git after all, which puts a bit of a box around what we can do without diverging sharply like the Garrett project did. We do have file locking, which I do not believe GitHub has, but this is kind of a minor feature. Pull request reviews are very similar, except that ours show pipeline status, security vulnerabilities, and dynamic review environments. We both have protected branches. We both have LFS or large file support. They have the code spaces IDE. We have our web IDE. So the key to winning here is to expand the conversation to include capabilities beyond just Git, such as epics. That's an add on to GitHub with a separate cost from a third party. Pipelines and environments, especially dynamic review environments. GitHub has actions now for basic pipelines, but those don't have the same level of environment management that we do. Security scans is another area. Those are an expensive add-on to Azure DevOps. And binary repositories. GitLab has them, GitHub doesn't, and customers will often be paying for JFrog Artifactory or Sonatype Nexus to get this capability. In short, it's best to focus on the value of the entire GitLab solution rather than the differences in point tool features and understand that where we do win against just GitHub on just SCM is in the scalability of GitLab for self-hosted customers in highly regulated industries.